Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A podcast on Inside the Birds YouTube channel. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jason Avant, and I'm here with my main man, Quentin Michael. Q, say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back. Feeling good. Let's get it. Listen, the <laughs> birds are 10 and 1 at this point. Much needed victory over a Green Bay Tech backpacker team that has a Hall of Fame red quarterback, four time MVP, multiple time Pro Bowler, one of the best arms, overall arm talents we've ever seen. And Aaron Rodgers, the birds were able to get that done. Before we get into that, we want to say thank you guys for always tuning into the QA podcast on Inside the Birds YouTube channel. Make sure you submit your questions too if you want them answered to inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. Follow us Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also check out this podcast on Amazon Music and uh or and, and Amazon and Apple Music. Um, so just make sure that you are um checking us out. And uh, yeah, Q, let's get right into this. Thank you to Jeff and Adam and to everyone that's responsible and Josh, everybody. Thank you, guys. Let's get right into it. Eagles win 33, um, 40 to 33, beat the Packers. Your big picture yeah. takeaways um, from the game. Uh, what what are some of the things that, that just st stood out to you um, with this game? Well, to me, the, the biggest thing that stood out was that this team just finds a way to win. I mean, it's they're, they've had games, especially the last few, where things have not gone right. They've had turnovers. Um, they've given up, you know, huge runs in the run game, special teams we're seeing, um, you know, fumbles, stuff like that. So we're seeing some bad things happen, but we see this team um, continue to um, turn it up when the time needs it. They, they tend to just figure it out as the game goes along. And um, to me, that's what stands out the most is that this team, um, even though it's not going great, they're going to figure out a way to win. And if not, they're going to they're going to fight like hell, which is which is all you need at this point right now in the season. Yeah, I, I agree that this is a this is a tough team. The Eagles are a tough team mentally, even when things are going bad, they still fight to the end and they give their their, their best effort, their best shot. I will say this game plan. To me, what stood out the most was how the Eagles offensive staff, coordinators, run game coordinator, head coach, their scheme and their game plan to attack the Green Bay Packers, they totally and completely outcoached the Green Bay Packers and um, Joe Barry, who's been getting the heat turned up on him. Matt LaFleur's been asked to fire him. Uh, <laughs> You know, they gave up over, over 20 tackles in this one game. Wow. They missed 20 tackles, over 20 tackles in this game. Matt LaFleur said in his press conference that it's the most tackles that he's seen his, any of his teams give up in one game by far. Wow. <laughs> That's you know, crazy. so it talks about, you know, now they're hurting with personnel. They didn't have DeAndre um, uh, they, uh, Campbell. They didn't have, you know, um, my main man from Michigan. Why is his name? Escape Rashawn Gary. Um, you know, they they're missing Eric Stokes. They're missing multiple pieces. They're they're they basically have Savage playing the nickel Savage. corner, and he's out of position. They have a lot of things going on. They got a young rookie in there, Quay Walker. They they got a lot of things going on. With that being said, the offensive the offensive staff killed the defensive Green Bay staff when it came to, to, to execution. So that's the thing that kind of stick out to me most. Um, we've won, you know, two in a row since we lost to Washington. Can our strengths, the bird strengths, run? Um, can their strengths can overcome special teams and run defense? What do you think? I mean, it's, it's kind of been an issue. I mean, I, I think the last couple of games we're seeing a little more issues with the special teams, but the run defense has kind of been up and down all year. Um, you have one game where it's it's stellar, and you have another game where it's not up to par. So um, 
I, I think I'm a little more worried about the run game defense, especially we're talking about the playoff run. That's when you really need to be able to shut down the team. And we're going to see next week, you know, with, with uh, King Henry coming in here, it's going to be um, it's going to be tough. So we'll see how those guys adjust to that. But um, I am a little bit where I'm not as worried about the special teams. I think those are little minor things that can be fixed. But the run defense has got to um, it's got to be more locked down. Can't have these long runs because in tight games in the playoffs and this playoff run, all that stuff really matters. And special teams matters. But if you can't stop the run against any of these teams in the playoffs, it's going to be tough. The reason the run game matters to me and I agree with you is that you're going to play teams in the playoffs like the Vikings, who if they put their nose down and we beat them once, but that's not the playoff Vikings. So let's get that. Let's get yeah. that, you know, straighten out in your mind right now. OK, Seattle, Seattle runs the ball. OK, yeah. and they run they run it effectively. The 49ers yes. will be there. I've been saying it all year. Yep. The dang team will be there. And if you can't stop the run versus these teams, you're not freaking stopping Kyle Shanahan's run game That's and the real. assortment of ways that they can run the ball. And they got a dude named Debo that you don't know who, when and how he's going to get it. And if we can't tackle freaking Aaron Jones, it's going to be hard to tackle Debo. Yeah. You know, so that right there – worries me and there's multiple other teams that that that, that and there's there it's becoming a resurgence of teams running the football a couple yeah. years ago people weren't running at all now it's become a resurgence because that we've gotten so bad at tackling as a league that teams are making hay running the football again yeah. you know so yeah. it's it's starting to the, that tide of running is starting to change and, and starting to happen again yeah. Yeah, because when they, so, they they change all the rules and make it all hard, hard on the defense, yeah, you get this, <laughs> and you get this exactly. Should, <laughs> should the Eagles consider? Should they be considered the NFC favorite? And Jalen Hurts is he the front runner for the MVP? Mm. I mean, they're they got one loss. It's hard to not consider them the favorite. Um, there are some teams that are resurging, like you said, the Vikings, the Niners are getting getting healthier, getting better. Um, Seahawks are always there. They're always tough. Um, and, and, and Dallas, I mean, Dallas is still there. So yeah, it's who can run the football as well. Yeah. Um, they, I would, I would say they're, a, they have a slight lead in that conversation, but that, that window is closing. Like that door is closing. Teams are catching up and, um, you know, they're starting to get healthy. There's teams that are starting to, to figure out. I think this was the first game where we went back to where that the game plan was more dominant. We had a stretch mm -hmm. of two or three games where it looked like teams were starting to catch up to this offense and figure them out a little bit and slow them down. Um, and so it's it's kind of tough to pull to call it right now. In my my opinion, I think they have a slight lead right now, but it's that window's closing, man. Are you crazy, Q? <laughs> I don't know, man. Are you know. crazy? <laughs> Somebody wake him up right <laughs> over the top of the head. Wake him up. The Eagles have to be an NFC favorite. I think that there are teams that are dangerous and teams that on the, on their good day, if they're playing them at home, the 49ers can give the Eagles trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can any of these teams give the Eagles trouble? Yes. But the overall favorite who's played the best football for the majority of the season has been our team. You take away two games of them not playing up to standard, up to par, maybe some quarters too. Take away a few quarters, a few games, whatever it is. Our team has played the most consistent out of any team in the NFL, not just the NFC. We've played the most complete football of any team in the NFL Overall, so yes, in the NFC, are we the favorite? Bottom down, hands down, whatever you want to say. The Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles, are the favorite. That doesn't mean that teams won't gain ground. That doesn't mean that teams won't be competitive and teams can't beat them. Yes, we've seen our team play down to other teams. So can teams beat us? Yes. But are we the clear-cut favorite, especially if you got to come through Philadelphia? you damn right. Yeah. We're, we should be the favorite. And as, as you get guys back, you get healthy, a blessing in disguise. You know, you know, Gardner Johnson is not out for the entire season. 
a lot of these guys that we have on that that, that are hitting IR are coming back later. So that's a, a, a good sign. Good point. Good point. Now, Jalen Hurts is front runner for the MVP. That <laughs> one I'll punt on. Yeah. You know, I love I love Jalen. I think he's gonna be one or two. I think they're always going to consider people that are passing the ball more than running the ball. But yeah. when you consider the, the record, and then you consider how many rushing touchdowns he's running for, you know, yeah, which is yeah. eight. He has eight, eight yeah. right now. He has 17, 17, pass, 17 touchdowns and three interceptions. That's pretty good. That's really good. He, he get he, If he can get on the hot streak of throwing touchdowns and he can end up somewhere in that – 30 touchdown range, 28, 30 touchdown range, along with 12, 15 rushing. Now he's now you're talking. So yes, I think he's going, he's in the top three. I don't necessarily know if he's the favorite. I don't think he's a favorite either. Um it, his his pass rating is over 105, yeah, too, which yeah, is impressive. Yeah. Um it for me, it's always you never get it that first year. Like you never get it the year that you really ball out. It's always the next year. So and it's it's kind of that that mindset of um, you know you got to do it more than once. It's, yeah, one good year is a, a lucky streak. They'll say the same thing about Tua, who's having. I think he's having a good season. Um, you know, Geno Smith, who I think's having a good season. Um, they're all in that conversation. Um, obviously, not at the level that Jalen is, um, but I, I, I do agree. I think because of this style of offense because of the the passing game of other teams like Patrick Mahomes or other quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes, um, you know, Burrow, Josh Allen, it'll be tough for him to get that MVP. But I do think he's definitely in that conversation, like you said. Yeah. But you can't, you can't, you can't knock him. We'll oh, we'll no, get no, we'll get to all. the to the re- let's let's go. Eagles 40, Packers 33. What stood out about the run game in particular, Q schematically? Why was Green Bay powerless to stop it? When I watched the game and I went back and watched it again, to me, it was on, on um, I would say on almost every single play, what stood out to me was the athleticism of this offensive line. I mean, they're coming off the ball. They're like some damn snipers, man. It was like still team six and the way that they're, they're, their angles and the, the different ways and different, different schemes that they can execute in their blocking to me, that's what stood out the most. And then you got a running back and a quarterback that are aggressive runners. They're breaking tackles. They're not running afraid. I mean, it was a complete. It was a complete package to me. And so, it's it's almost. It, I don't want to say I felt bad for the Packers, but I'm like, if I was on that defense and I was a safety in the box, I'd be like, man, what the hell is going on? I'm getting hit left, right. I'm getting pulled. Like it was just. It was a complete. A complete show, like a it was like a uh, what you call it, a, um, mm-hmm. a clinic. It was like a clinic, a blocking clinic, right there from all the different um, yeah. schemes I saw. Yeah, they they executed double teams extremely well. They got up to the second level. They pulled four different players, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> like, like I want you to get that. Like Lane Johnson pulled, um, Landon Dickerson pulled, Jason Kelsey pulled. And um, you know, uh Isaac pull. Like, so when you when you when you get the when you get the get to going and you get the moving, you get all these guys that are that are moving around and then getting to their target, and then and then the timing of the play. But what stood out to me, one of the things that stood out to me is that when Green Bay was in um a 40 front. Right. And they had the two mm-hmm. linebackers in and they had a safety down or what, what have you. And they were in man coverage. They were mm-hmm. in man coverage. The Eagles had the Eagles had look at what it seems to me like a check in that situation on third down. When they were in when they were in when they were in that 40 front, they had the they had the, the nickel and they had the the guy out. One guy that would, would just totally leave the running back would leave. So one of the one of the linebackers are gone. Yeah. Right. The other guy will leave. Now the safety's gone. And now there's the guy that's in the middle that's responsible for Jalen Hurts. But you're in a 40 front, remember, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So now you have four on four. The two guards, because of the way they were lined up, it was two, three techniques, right? They would go in and bump them off, 
right? Jason yeah. Kelsey would hit one. The other guard would turn his butt, and Jason Kelsey would go up to the spy, which was the middle linebacker. And now Jalen Hurts has this big chasm to run through. And I'm like, dude, why would you play this much man <laughs> versus this team? Yeah. And we can out scheme you. So now, so now we have a person for your spy, and everybody else can just run people off. It made no sense to me. I was like, why do you continue to do it? You don't want to correct it. That may have been one of the worst, worst coaching ex like <laughs> displays that I've seen in a long time from Joe Barry, the defense coordinator for the, the Green Bay Packers. Like that doesn't make sense for you to, for you to just let Jalen Hurts run for what was it? 129. No, it was more than that. Jalen Hurts ran for doggone. It's right here in front of me somewhere. 157. 157. 9.2 average. <laughs> well, you had two, you had two people. Miles Sanders with 143 with yeah. seven, 6.8 average. Like but but the Jalen Hurts' runs don't make sense. Yeah. Cause because most of those were designed, like a few of those were design runs that, J that Jason Kelsey just got up to the to, to his spot. And you were a man. Like you don't play man that much versus a running quarterback. No. But we have been seeing a few teams have some success with it, but they always had that extra overhand guy on the side, yes. on the side of the, the zone read, so they could overplay when he pulls it. I don't the, the thing is, is that if you're going to do that, you have to occupy the line. Yes. You can't allow a double team to get up to a middle linebacker. Right. Yes. So whatever you're doing when it comes to stunts or whatever you have to do in order to collapse the pocket and, and funnel him to a direction. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. if, if, uh -huh. if, if your thing is we're going to funnel him left, funnel him left, <laughs> make make the make the pass rush head over to you know your left and then he runs over to you know to his left yeah yeah <laughs> and now and now the guy and now the guy just has a one-on-one -on -one tackle going going in that direction that's crazy so 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 to me it just didn't make much sense you don't play this much man they're going to burn you and that's what happened with the coach the coach got happy and Jalen Hurts ended up hurting him Later yeah. in that game, oh, y'all did it, and I, I wasn't in my running framework, my running mind, but if you're going to do this, I'm going to put on my running mind, and now I'm anticipating it now, and you see Green Bay get the brunt of it. A lot of this happened late in the pack, uh, late in the coach game. Yeah, and that's that's a dangerous thing. Like when he's looking to run yeah. like that. When he exactly when he's oh y'all gonna play y'all gonna play me okay I might even pass him. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. We kind of cover we kind of covered that. Um her 17, 157 yards. Um yeah, it to me it just it didn't make sense. Okay, so not only were they out coached um and out schemed, like I said, they missed over 20 tackles according to Matt LaFleur in this press conference. The other thing is is that you got a bunch of guys in their secondary. We talked about our secondary. Ooh. <laughs> Dudes that just will don't want to tackle at all. Jerry Alexander. <laughs> it was embarrassing as a DB, man. <laughs> Bro, like I was like, these dudes don't want to tackle at all. It was guys like standing right next to him. More power to you when you get paid that much and you your job is not to tackle you and you can get away with it like that. More power to you, but ain't no way you can come to my team in my locker room as a mm -hmm. head coach and my and I'm getting killed like that and you and you giving me that type of performance, man. Stop. And this is this is what happens when you have a team. To me, a team that just doesn't care. That's what that looks like. Like yeah. you have a team that's two two different. Two different uh, mindsets. You can see it on the field. Now, we had, like we said, we have talked about the Eagles secondary. They they're trying. They're trying to tackle. I mean, there's still some. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah. That was that was that was some that was some. Yeah. All right. 
I don't even want to. I, I, the words I would describe this would, would be inappropriate, and it, it would be wrong. It'll probably reach them. <laughs> well, I need to. Uh, oh. Any concern? Any concerns about um, the shots Hurst took? Like as far as you know, him him not getting out of bounds or getting extra yards. I mean, he's a he's a big, strong kid. You don't like a quarterback taking those hits. I do think that a couple of them, you know, the refs need to. I'm done talking about the refs, but it'd be nice to get a little bit more, you know, protection on them. But I'm not as worried. I think if this trend continues and he's taking all these these runs and it's part of the the game plan like that, I'd like to see him get down a little bit more. But he's he's a big, strong he's a big, strong kid. Man, he's young. I think he'd be all right. Um, how much did um, Hurts run or uh, threat? How much did Hurts running the ball um, help Miles Sanders? 21 carries, 143 yards, two touchdowns. Look at Miles Sanders out there looking like B. Looked, West yeah, out man. there. <laughs> yeah, he looked nice out there, man. Two tugs. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, it's just the, the whole scheme. I mean, I think it just all came together really nicely. I don't think, I don't think necessarily it was um hurts helping Sanders. I just think the entire scheme just worked well. Yeah. I, I mean, because he's been he's been balling all year. I think Miles has had a really good year. Yeah. He, he we, he's had he had he's had a really good year. The offensive line dominated there. Like there. Like the, their their defensive line was 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 being pushed back the entire game. The offensive line was getting to the second level. So when you get an offensive line to the second level, now a running back is in Barry Sanders mode already. He they're mm-hmm. they're they're downhill. They're able to 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 make the the safety or the guys that don't want to tackle them cornerbacks <laughs> at all. And um, able to, to to make yards. And the thing that I liked about Miles Sanders, which I didn't see as much last year, is that he's continuing to t- turn his feet when yeah. he's starting to get contact. So he's starting to break more tackles than what we you know have seen from him in the past. And it's pretty pretty clear with his touchdown on the goal line where he was literally um, behind offensive lineman at the three yard line, and then he just emerges and is chugging his feet. And he didn't get one yard into the end zone. He was like six yards into the end zone by the time his feet stopped and he hit the ground. It was just like, dude, nobody's stopping me from getting into the end zone in this moment, in this time. So I think that his mindset is changing. And when you have an offensive line that as is as dominant, and when you don't, when you when you're not consistently in a five man front, the Eagles team are going to kill you. Like oh, yeah. If you're and, and that's like the only way to consistently stop the Eagles' offensive line is to put a big, heavy, heavy Linval Joseph type player over Jason Kelsey, where he can't get out and you can't pull him and he's going to cause havoc or he's going to get one-on-one and push him back because Jason Kelsey is a smaller center. That's the only way you have a chance against the Eagles. If you're playing a 40 front against the Eagles and you're trying to consistently um, make that your your base against them, you're just not going to win that battle because our guys are too technically sound in order to let five of them, your four, beat their five. It's just not happening. It's, yep. it's just not happening. You're gonna you're gonna have to go five for five against the Eagles in order to stop them. Yep, consistently. Yeah, <laughs> it's mo, mo, like most teams can do it. Not not against our team. You just can't. It, mm-hmm. it, 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 yeah, you you need some big gentlemen for that to work, and some aggressive linebackers. Yeah. And, it, and and the and the and, and the Packers have 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 lost their best linebacker. All right, they just look defeated. Look defeated. All right, you go ahead, Q. Where we at? AJ Brown. Oh yeah. So, oh man, AJ Brown. So AJ Brown, he put the ball on the on the ground again. Um, that's six what six fumbles um, in the last three weeks. Is there some concern there with these fumbles? Doesn't it seem like it's a lot on his brain, or is he's 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 thinking, or yeah. like like he's in his mind right now? I that's what I see. Yeah. I see it like when I'm when when um yeah sixteen fumbles not just yeah no six six that. overall team fumbles but yeah. I see that he's in his mind more yeah. so than anything like the drop pass that he had he's put a few on the ground and yeah. we don't notice them just because he makes spectacular play that's the one thing that you have when you're a big play receiver nobody remember, remembers <laughs> like your your drops. 
if you're a dude that's the, that's the first down in a cloud of dust like me, they remember, remember all your drops. <laughs> but if you can make a touchdown in two plays, nobody they be like, oh, that drop would drop. You know what I mean? Like that's how it is. Um, but I think that he's in his mind a little bit, and he he has to get out of it because the the, the team needs him. And another thing too is that what you're doing at the end of the game to protect the football is what you should do all the time. Yeah. When I'm coaching receivers on any level, I always tell them, you know, high and tight. If there's one person, you use your off arm to defend yourself and to shake tackles, right? That means stiff arm, arm bar, break his arm, do whatever yeah. you have to do, right? Low shoulder with it, whatever you have to do, just high and tight. If there's ever two people around you, you put two hands on the ball. Don't go against two, three people with one hand on the ball. It just doesn't make sense. And that's what you've seen. You see a whole bunch of tacklers for the Packers. One guy comes in late and strips the ball out because there's only one hand on the ball. Like You got to recognize that these dudes are trying to get the ball. So whenever you're around multiple defenders, just put your hands on the ball. And that's just something that pros should know. But at the same time, pros are expected to know. And people forget that they have to coach pros. Yeah. You have to take pros back to the basics because over a period of time of being a pro, you kind of lose your fundamentals because people expect it from you rather than get on your butt about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's my thing with with him and and it and it he has to be coached and reminded. Don't don't just give him the AJ Brown, you a pro bowler treatment or you a really good player on our team, you the most important player in our, on our, in our passing game. No, don't give him that treatment. Get on his ass treatment. And you yeah. have to do that as a coach. Yeah. And like I was saying, because it's not going to stop, because what happens too now is the defenders, they're watching the tape. And oh, I yeah. remember every every week when if a guy put the ball on the, on the, on the, on the, if he fumbled the entire week, the defensive back coach, like, hey, man, he'll drop it. He'll drop it. Just go in there and punch it. If someone else is holding him up, come in there and punch it. So until as a as an offensive player or defense or anything, until you put put close a door on that, yeah, it's going to keep happening. So you might as yeah. well just start, like you said, put two hands on it because every time he gets the ball now, just watch. Every time he gets the ball, there's going to be people punching at it now. And that's what people are doing now because they saw it last week. Yeah. So dudes come in, let me, let me get the ball out. He'll give it up. Yeah. So people are trying even hard. It's the same dude, the same dude that 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 gives you alligator arms. Every safety out there, like, oh, like y'all, he <laughs> I, I'm gonna go over, get near him and scare him. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just how it is. You you like you put that on film, they're gonna attack it and make you and, and, and make you prove it to them. Yeah. And the same way is the other way. If a dude, if if you know a dude gonna catch the ball. You 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 like you may be a little bit hesitant going into the tackle because you know he gonna catch it. So you like yo if I if if I go and try to do something he may get he may shake it. You know yeah. what I mean or whatever. Yeah. That's just how it is. They respect you more when you catch it. It's like ah, I ain't gonna gamble on this. I'm just gonna make the tackle. You know what I mean? <laughs> just secure the secure the tackle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he gonna catch it anyway. <laughs> Run defense issues refer- resurface. Mm-hmm. So it, it happened again, and there's only there's only there's only so much that. Where was Linval Joseph, the superhero, and <laughs> Dom against Sue, the superhero, this week? Well, that's the thing is like the teams that are successful running on this team, they don't go in the middle; they go off tackle. They force the cornerbacks and the secondary to come up and they make tackles. That first long run that AJ Dillon had, there were some people turning that down. They saw that big boy coming through that that giant hole and was like, oh, "Let me just hold on, let me catch him at an angle instead of let's get down here right now." Go downhill and do it. And that's the only way. That the only way again, like we talked about before with AJ, the only way that you can shut this down is if that secondary starts coming up and hitting and smacking people. Reed Blankenship, I saw him do it a couple of times. He, he's a guy that I would have in the box. Yeah. Because he will come up and hit you. He, he wants to tackle. That's the yes. thing. Like, he made some mistakes. Reed mm-hmm. made some mistakes in pass coverage. He got a pick. Yeah. Made some mistakes in pass. But he wanted the smoke. 
Yes. <laughs> he want he he took it like, yo, I'm in the game. I'm going to bring a level of physic. And that I was like, yeah, like, like old school, right? It was like a- <laughs> I was like, fine. I'm talking about like dudes. It was one dude in the flat. Somebody wrapped him up. He ran, he ran from about 15 yards to get there. He's like, oh, you're not gonna make it. I'm <laughs> like, I, I'll do it. Like, I'll glad I look, thank you for, for saving something for me. <laughs> like, that's football. Yes. Like, I don't know if you can watch that game and not be happy for a guy like Reed Blankenship. I don't know if you can. Like, you want Gardner Johnson to, to get healthy and play. But one thing I know. If you put freaking Reed in there, he wants to tackle. Yes. <laughs> That's, yes. I don't like I feel like David Kelly, right? <laughs> Kelly, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. So yeah, no, he um oh. <laughs> yeah. He'll he'll tackle. I think he'll come up against Derrick Henry. Listen, Derrick Derrick, I, Derrick Henry didn't got Derrick Henry didn't got the noise brought to him. Now I I've seen it. Yeah, I didn't seen it one on one. I didn't seen who was that that gave him the biz? It was, it was about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Somebody tackled him straight up one on one, head up and like butt like did him in. Yeah, I was like, oh, are, right is, 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 are they putting it on tape now? Somebody got him <laughs> same for same show. It was a perfect. It was a perfect. It was the perfect okay. step. It was a perfect step. Yeah, yeah. I listen. We we believe in you, Reed. If they put hey, you in just, the box, just just listen, come up and smack a few people. Just don't stop. Everybody come up with Derrick Henry trying to wait. Just yes. don't stop. Get you get you a leg. Get your body across. Don't stop. Don't stop. And you got to catch him when he's in the hole. Because if he gets out, yeah. And he's, and he can get that that big ass yeah, stiff yeah, arm. Excuse that my one. language. That big <laughs> arm, the stiff arm. That's not what you want. You don't want to be on ESPN <laughs> flipping over, getting posterized. So get him no, before he gets going. No, but I think you make I think you make a point, right? So whenever our whenever our corners and our safeties are responsible for tackling, tackling, it hadn't gone well for our team. Yes, and. I don't know that this will change. Especially maybe in the playoffs, you so, may get more motivation to do it because you're going for a Super Bowl hunt. Yeah. But guy, but guys are and but I don't necessarily know how you can turn that on. You you really can't. The thing, the thing that's so to me, like we're like I was saying before, the thing that makes it tough is that it's it's on scheme. So when a team is scheming you up to get a one on one with a corner that they know that's not what they want to do, it's going to be tough. And the only way is they're just going to have to. Sometimes you might they're just going to have to throw it in there, man. But the the other part of it too is is the safeties need to get a little bit more involved. There's no way. A running back like A.J. Dillon should be – he's slow. I mean, he's big, he's strong, he's slow. There's no way that even if you're running on a corner, you should go 30 yards into the end zone without getting touched. Yeah. So, to me, that says there's that's guys that don't want to come up or they want to come up, but they want to come up when someone else has slowed them down a little bit. Yeah. And the only way to play this game, the only way to play this position is sometimes you have to sacrifice your body. Sometimes you have to go in there and – and it's gonna hurt. It's not gonna be fun, but you got to do it sometimes. And that's what that's what separates a starter, a pro bowler, a star, a person that's 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 respected around this game. That's what separates them from the other guys, the guys that aren't in the league very long, the guys that are willing to come up like Reed, that are willing to come up and smack somebody, that will make a a mistake but still come back in the game and smack people. So mm-hmm. there's no other way around it. Especially now, we're talking playoff football. There's no way around it. It's, it's yeah. got to be now. Yeah, you can't. You, you, you. <laughs> All right, Q. I, 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 I didn't said enough about the safety tackling in the in the in the corner tackling this whole year. Um, yeah, it just goes up and down. You know, it's like some games is good, some games is not. Here, here's it's the other thing consistent. too about you know you know that that was frustrating to me about the run game, like. 
to me, I just hate to see our defensive line because there were times where the guards are just turning their hips. Yep. They weren't trying to do much. They just turn the hips. And that lets me know that you're not that they know that okay, their first step is gonna be like out of the gate. They're not they're not gonna read my footwork or read my, you know, to be able to reposition, right? So if you're coming out to get power, two hands, you mm-hmm. know, or whatever, and then get into your pass rest. Complete your run assignment first and then get into your pass rush if, if it turns out to be a pass. I just I just don't think that our guys are able to read blocks. And it was one-on-one blocks, a lot of them, where, where hips was just being turned. The, you know, like the line, the, the, the guard would come up, hips turn, and now he's sealed. It was yeah. weird. I was like, that shouldn't happen with a guy that's, a, a, that's tuned to the game plan and also – a guy's movement and their technique, especially more than once, that happens to me one time. I'm ready for the next one. I'll get into my pass rush if it if it gets there. But it, but at the same time, I know this team is deficient when it comes to throwing the football. So um, with, with their playmakers and all those types of things, they want to run the ball. So why wouldn't I anticipate run rather than trying to get to the quarterback? Yeah, that's. I think that that I think your player IQ has to go up a little bit. Like this team's game plan was to run the ball against you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm with you. I don't, I don't know. It's it's only so many it's, times you're gonna give me a cover two before I start to anticipate cover two. Right, right. You get what I mean. So if yeah. I come and and for for an example, if if there's a cover two defense and I'm an outside receiver and I come out full speed, that corner is gonna knock my freaking head off. <laughs> Like I can't be full stride length. I'm coming off this like it's cover three. Like that, I had to chase him down. <laughs> like no, he's there for a reason to reroute you, and I'm coming full speed. I can't redirect, so I have to be able to anticipate him doing something. So therefore, when I come out, I'm not coming off full stride length. I'm coming out with controlled speed, and then I can adjust to get past the guy that's in front of me. And it's the same way with D-linemen. It's the same way with any other position. If you see something enough, you should be able to adjust and redirect yourself and not keep doing the same thing coming off full stride length. It don't make sense. It just don't. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe they coach like that. I don't know. Um, concerned don't know. if Garner Johnson is out for extended, extended time? Any concern? Well, obviously, you're just concerned about him as a person. I mean, that's I've never heard of that happening in the game. A lacerated the, kidney. A lacerated kidney. Yeah. Um, the hit looked crazy too, but um, I'm 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 concerned. I think Reed stepped in and he did well for um not having much play time. Um, obviously, you're gonna lose the ball hawking ability a little bit. Although we did get a pick on a nice play from from Reed, but I I think. In terms of playmaking ability, Rogers was looking at right there. He was clearly in cover four. Uh, yeah, I, uh, that he was deep, probably the deep crossing cover four. <laughs> with nobody holding him. We, we already talked about Aaron. I don't think he really care right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, he, what the hell he's doing. <laughs> he just felt something and he went with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was like, "Man, maybe, maybe he was, maybe he was thinking that the post or something was yeah, maybe the guy front side didn't run the right route." Um, yeah but um but yeah so for extended period of time uh, i am a little concerned about that but um you know i don't they said that last rated kidney i mean they said that he could be back this season but that's kind of scary man i don't know i don't know yeah. i'm not a doctor so i don't know that just sounds bad yeah i don't know i don't know like i i've i've fallen on a football before and, and my and my kidney was bleeding yeah Ooh. like like a like a I remember in practice at Michigan, I it was like a, a post. I used to run deep in Michigan sometimes. Can you ever believe that? So, so I had a post route, and the quarterback threw it like long, like far. And I was get I dove to catch it, caught it, but I couldn't like turn my body in time because it was like one of those far dives. And I brought mm-hmm. it into my body, and the ball and all that pressure hit my stomach, like side of my stomach, and um. And I was peeing blood. Ooh, that's, and um, and that's I played. I, I ended up playing that game. <laughs> but Wait, yeah, we didn't. You know. went back in in the game. 
No, no, that was practice. I was out for the rest of practice. Oh, you said practice. practice. Playing the game. Because in a couple of days, my urine was clear. Practice, man. Huh? You Diving going like it. that in practice? Yeah, it's Michigan, man. I only know one way. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't man. learn how to practice until my second and third year. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm scary, sure man. I'm sure that I'm sure that it heals faster than than what we than what we um than what we think. Okay. All right, yeah. Well, hopefully it gets yeah. back. Healthy. And it was weird, like it was weird how it happened. I don't think that it would have happened if he would have tried to tackle him without a. Sh- yeah, he I'm was not trying gonna, to protect not- again. Trying not to get the penalty. It looks like he tried to aim it and not get the. The the, shot to maybe the that's, head. that's what it is. Maybe, yeah, because I don't know. Maybe they, they, guys are trying to come up with alternative ways to tackle because they don't want to get 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 the penalty. Yeah, yeah. To me, it was like he was just like doing one, doing one of those. Yeah, it look, it looked weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm, he like he gave him a little, a little left and it's and it hit it. Yeah, it was weird. It was very weird. I'm just like just go hit him. But maybe he thought he was thinking about the the, the fine. I, don't, I never think about that. He he did. Um, here, here you go, Q. What happened to Christian Watts? What, what happened on Christian Watson's touchdown? The one that was a lot of people gone, vacated the middle of the field, one on one with Marcus Epps. Safety didn't take the best yeah. angle, and uh, night night. Yeah, that First was. All, how did he get one on one with Epps? I'll show you. Okay, so here's the play we're talking about now. Here's a read blanket ship right here. Okay, the the. Packers are in a condensed formation, all right? So there are two tight formations down here. They're in a single high defense. Um, this is a, this is tough. This is tough to play this route, and I'll, I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, it's tough to play this route if you are not on the same page with these, these guys right here, these corners, because they're tight right here. I'm thinking there's going to be some kind of deep shots either outside or across the, the middle of the field. Now, in a single high coverage, Anytime that happens, you have to be on point with each other because with them being tight across this, when they're when they're in this tight formation, if this guy goes all the way across the field, he's got to take him all the way across the field in a single high man coverage. Okay, um, so I'm gonna pa- I'm gonna hit play real quick, and we're gonna talk about what happens. One of these guys goes all the way across the field here, and then this guy goes across here. The middle safety, usually what's called, we call it a radar, is this safety is going to sit low and take the shorter of these over routes because they're from the outside guys. You have to take the shorter of the over routes. And then the two corners end up, they call it flying high, where they fly high and they double the remaining over route. So that's really how this play is supposed to play out. But what happens instead We have the play action off of this. Okay, if I freeze it here. Now, what happens here, Reed, as a young player, I understand this. He's deep middle safety. He's playing high. So what happens is, and it's very tough for a middle, for a young guy, because this feels like a whole lot of space. You see these guys running sky free. They they weren't able to get a jam because they're in crack splits. Um, and so now he feels this guy coming open which is actually what's happening because this corner is outside shade with Watson running across the field here. So what's really should happen here is this middle safety should be sitting here. Reed should be sitting at about the 50 yard line and taking Watson across the field because he already has the leverage to be able to lock on him from that point. And then this remaining corner is going to fly high and replace this safety. And they're going to end up doubling here. But that doesn't happen because they didn't alert it before the play. They didn't talk about it before the play. And you got a young guy back here that's probably seen this for the first time. And on top of that, with the play action, that brings the linebackers up and it opens this giant hole. And it's almost impossible to stop this play without doing what I'm talking about, which is called the radar. So now he's breaking on it. Watson's got the ball. Now it becomes a foot race. The one thing I would suggest in this situation, it's already as bad as it can be. If I'm Reed, I am going right here, touchdown angle. I'm going to go as high as I can and try to cut this fast receiver off and make him come back to this guy instead of making him the foot race. He takes a bad angle. Watson's a really fast guy. He outruns everyone. We score a touchdown. They score a touchdown there. 
Mm, mm, That's mm. tough. So I want to go back to it one more time. Just let it play just live. Uh, of course, it does this. I'm just going to let it play live one more time so everyone can see it. Condensed formations, outside shade corners, single high. It goes across the field. Bad angle. And there you go. Q, and talk about – Talk about is that TJ Edwards at Kaiser? Is that TJ? That's TJ. Does TJ take a bad drop right there because of play action? Because I don't understand if he's if he's the only one in the middle of the field in a what we would call a thief defense where the linebacker is free. Why is he angling out to the left? And that, is that just because of the quarterback's eyes? Like why is he vacating in the middle of the field? Because he's the right only here. one that's responsible to stop anything in the middle. If he goes left or right, the defense is done because you want to funnel the throws toward him. So right here, yes. What's what's tough is you want your linebackers to play aggressive. You want them if they're feeling run to step up. So he does step up. Now, but the run is to the left. Right. But he's I think he's got his eyes on this guy right here coming back. Uh -huh. Possibly like a swap boot or something. So he sees he sees the play action by Jordan. I think he's still playing the read at first, and then he sees this action coming back here. Mm -hmm. So that pulls him just a little bit. See this guy oh, right here? Oh, yeah. And so what he should do in this situation, what we always were taught as linebackers, you turn and put your foot in the ground and turn your back, and you run as fast as you can and find the first white jersey and get your white hand jersey. up as high as you can. Yeah. And try to elevate that throw because right now we're done. <laughs> without these two, without and then really, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a, ends up being the three on two. You got one, two, three on two. You just have to figure out a way to do that. So, if you mm -hmm. do choose to keep your safety high, now this guy, he should just come off over here, and now it's a double between these two guys. But it's a young safety; it's probably his first time seeing it. I'm sure they're going to be going over it um, this week, and they're going to see it. This is a very common concept. This is what. You know, the Eagles run this play. This is something that they can figure out really quickly and they can come up with a plan for it and just talk to each other. Hey, when I see these two guys tight down here like that, hey, be alert for the overouts. Be alert for the overout. Let's mm. pass it off. Yep. Boom. All right. There we go. Stop my coaching moment. <laughs> nice. Good job, Appreciate man. I learned guys. something, baby. Talk about the radar. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it. As you cut it with the safety and the corner has to replace them. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, it's strike up. Otherwise, it's night night. It's a <laughs> with that dude, you're not you're not catching, and that's young that's young guy stuff. And we talked about that, you know, throughout the season with a lot of guys, especially in a defense position, um, in the back end, them not knowing how to do certain things. Like we talked about it against the coach last week, how Josiah Scott, you know, first of all, they starting to pick on him too, uh, you know, a little bit. I'm glad he's able to get the pick, but they starting to pick on him a lot. Um, yeah. So. We'll, we we will injuries we'll, man Avante yeah, and, and yeah now CJ it's it's gonna be it's yes gonna sir be. all right Q let's get into one of our favorite parts of the show and that is our mojo read oh yeah let's get let's get to it let's get to it all right mojo mojo is building the sports stock market where you can invest in your favorite players. Invest in what you know. Turn sports knowledge into real money with Mojo, the sports stock market. Real stats, real value, share, entitle you to guaranteed payout based on career-ending stats. No off days, no off season. Share prices rise and fall constantly in real time based on career-long projections. Cash out anytime, build a portfolio, buy and sell on your terms, every play, every game, or every season. Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS by just downloading the app. You have the chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Click the link in the description for a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Must be 21 years and over, physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. Have a gambling problem? Hope is available at 1-800-GAMBLING. All right, so here's my sleeper, Q. 
And I may be going out of turn. Okay. But uh-huh. there's a few people. Because remember, this is based on career ending stats. Not this year. Not, okay. you know, the next couple of years. There's a player for the Bears that just had a season in the injury. Darnell Moody. Oh, Moody. yeah. He's out. Out for a long time. This young man can get open with the best of them. This young man has a high possibility of not being on the Bears in the next couple of years. And if this, this young man gets into the right quarterback's hands, yeah. the right quarterback's hands, <laughs> the right okay. one, he, a, he will be a problem. If he gets into Patrick Mahomes' hands, Ooh. he gets into Josh Allen's hands, Okay. So his player stock right now, Darnell Mooney, I think is down 15 something percent because he got hurt. And that's the time. Oh, it's a 12 percent. He's down 12 percent since he got hurt. <clears throat> and it's only going to continue to ride. I mean, continue to get lower because he's down and out and all that stuff. So, so you see saying buy, buy low. Balo, give yourself a year and a half, two years. He on a different team, different jersey. <laughs> Through the roof. Okay, all right. That's where my money going. All right, you can talk about rises and fallers. Oh, man, there's so many. So, right now, obviously, coming off the big game, Miles Sanders, he's up uh, 5.64%. He had 21 carries. 143 yards, two TDs, three receptions, 17 yards. Just complete ball in the game. Um, he's up 5.64%, but he's still young. Yeah. Hopefully, we bring him back here. You see what's going on with this offensive line. They're just going to continue to get better. I like Miles Sanders. Um, Q, let me ask you this. What's up? Different team. New York Jets. Mike White, three touchdowns this past game. He's up right now. Mm-hmm. What? Now, he played against the Bears, and the Bears are obviously trying to tank. Okay? Now, are we believing in Mike White? Or are we <clears> saying <throat> that it's it's just fool's gold? Should I buy Mike White or should I not? I'm I'm going to buy Mike White. Up 30% right now. I'm going to buy Mike White. And here's why. They got weapons in that Jets uh, receiving court. They got weapons. They got a great defense. They got a coach that believes in winning and playing the game the right way. I I think I think I believe it. I'm I'm buying. I'm buying you right buying? now. Buying? I'm buying, man. Buy. I believe. Hey, listen, man. I'm a I like, Mike I like White the had a dogs, few games man. like that a couple years ago and then boom boom boom. Plus Zach Wilson with the BYU. I'm with the Boise State, man. We don't like we don't like none of that oh, BYU. There so. it is. See, now the truth <laughs> comes out, ladies and gentlemen. The bias will always show its head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to man. Give me one more, Q. All right. Give me one, Christian Watson. Christian Watson. He just had a game versus us. One on one, one ten and one one touchdown. Four receptions. Four receptions. First of all, four receptions. One hundred ten yards. He's looking good, man. Got and he's big, coming he's on. Tall. That's his six touchdown in the last three games. That's yeah. his six touchdown in the last three games. He's up seven seven percent. Is he going to continue to rise? Or you think he's topped out? No, he's going to continue to rise. He's going to continue to rise. I think he's just got the build. He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism. He's got. Well, he has Aaron. He had Aaron Rodgers, but looks like Jordan Love's not going to be too bad. Got a good yeah. running game. So I, I'm buying. I'm with you. You buying him? Yeah, I'm with you on that. You know, it's so funny. This he's dude a is a big play machine, but he can't catch. True. <laughs> He he can't yeah, he can't like I I I watch the Packers games. The Joker put balls on the ground. He, but he it, it, it's all fun for all the fantasy. It's fun for the fantasy. But one thing I'll tell you this, it's gonna drive them nuts when they get to the playoffs and they, they need a critical third down and they throw that dude the ball. Like everybody loved the season because the guy going he he's still gonna get his touchdown, you know, all that type of stuff. When you start getting into critical moments, critical situations, a dude with 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 un- with shaky hands will drive you nuts. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you why I think that might not be so bad. Okay. okay. Do you remember a Packers receiver 
few years ago that had quite a few drops. Like he was dropping everything. Do you remember that guy? We were talking about Devontae Adams. Yeah. Do you remember that season he had? I remember that season when he dropped the whole bunch of passes. I remember that season. And do you know what happened since then? He's been like this dude it been up. dropping it since <laughs> on everything. This ain't no anomaly. <laughs> Devontae Adams been dropping it at Fresno State. <laughs> Christian Watson been dropping them in college. <laughs> he been dropping hey. them in camp. <laughs> Tough to he, please, man. He he, he gonna he gonna have a drop problem. I'm just saying. Remember, remember them uh, contacts that y'all used to wear. The receivers used to wear the red ones. Yeah, maybe for the sun. For the sun. Yeah, they, them, I think they were deemed this as unfair advantage. <laughs> oh, all right. that's, all, that, that's the only advantages y'all have is unfair <laughs> ones. All right, let's keep going. All right, right, topic three, special teams, um, the special teams. All right, Q, what can change? Because you're one of the best special teams players in the history of the Eagles, right? What can change about the special teams? And I have some thoughts about this, and but I want to hear from your perspective. My my biggest – the biggest thing that I I saw – well, first of all, on the long run, it's almost like they didn't expect the guy to bring it out because the ball was deep in the end zone. It's almost yeah. like they started to slow down and relax. And in special teams, you cannot assume that at any point in time that they're not going to bring the ball out. So that's number one. Number two, for me, the biggest problem is awareness. The we call them the four or fives. So if you're on, a, if you're um, for people that may not know, on the kickoff, if you count from the right towards the, the kicker. You go one, two, three, four, five, and then you go one, two, three, four, five the other way. All right. So the fours and the fives on these sides are the most important parts of the kickoff team. They are supposed to fly down the field as fast as they can, but also have some awareness and understand the blocking schemes and what's happening in front of them. So the things that I'm seeing is, especially on those long runs, I see the fours and the fives and sometimes the threes just flying down the field as fast as they can without any awareness of the blocking schemes in front of them. And they're just taking bad angles. They're running around blocks and they're getting walled off. You have to think of, you have to think of um, a kickoff sort of like a screen, right? If you, if you're on the edge on the screen and someone's running behind them and you just run by and get pushed by, you didn't do anything. You think that you're in your right lane, but what you actually really just did was you created an extra lane. You created a wider lane for the running the runner to run through. So for me, the biggest thing is the guys continue to fly down the field, especially in that four and five and three position. Continue to fly, continue to play aggressive. But at some point, you have to slow your feet, throttle your feet down. And like we talked about in the run game, get your hands on the blocker, extend, get off the block, and make a tackle. You can't just continue to just run down and get pushed by. That was yeah. the biggest thing I saw. Yeah, so I rewatched I rewatched those plays and I agree with you. So, and what he's talking about, you count from the sideline, one and toward the middle of the field toward the kicker, one and the guy that's close to the kicker, those are the fives, right? Your four and your fives have to play off each other, right? Usually you want your fives to be the fastest players because your fours can can make the fives right. So if the five goes down with speed and runs over to the left around the block because he think he can beat it back door. The four has to fold over back into the fives position so there's not a lane missing. Yes. If those two guys run down and both of them hit the same lane, that's going to create an opening. So if five runs down and he takes four's lane, four has to take five lane and vice versa. That's how that works. You can't have two people in one lane. And a fours, most of the time, are the guys that make the fives right. So if you see the five stay on his lane, he's running straight down the middle of the field, he's in his lane, I know to stay in mind, I'm good. If he crosses over into my lane, I just make that guy right. And that's just like two safeties playing football coming up to tackle. You don't want those guys on the same level. You want those guys to be stacked out so the one, the guy in the back can make it right. That's how you want to play that. So, yes, our guys did not play it that way. And the other thing, too, we don't understand because we have a bunch of young dudes on special team, a bunch of them. Um, 
the backup safety, Andre. You got, um, you know, uh, Johnson from Kansas. You have a, a bunch of young dudes out there playing special teams, which looks like they haven't played special teams in a long time because they don't understand how much space you need in order to run around people. There is a time to run around a block. There is. Yeah. If it's within the, the window where a guy's blocking you early and he's blocking you too far away from the ball, you can just run around him because you can get in the lane 10 yards past him, you know. But if that guy is in, in, in proximity to the ball, close proximity to the ball, you have to go through blockers at that point. Yes. You can't run around anymore because there's not enough space and time without him being able to read that block and, and, and make a play. So you have to run through people. Our guys are running around blocks when it's when it's confrontation time. And yeah. that's the problem for me. It's not that they're running around blocks. It's that they're running around blocks when the period of running around blocks is over with. Once you get inside 15 yards of the ball carrier, it's over with running through blocks. You have to run through people, and now you have to be an ass kicker, a better athlete, and a more physical person than the other guy. And we got guys that want to just take the easy way out. How do you get on those plays on the first kickoff? No. The second kickoff return, the one that he bent back to the right, Yeah, there were four dudes that was blocked one-on-one -on -one on a kickoff return in a national you are running full speed down the field yeah with a 30 yard sprint of power <laughs> under yeah. you and the dude that's running backwards turns his hips and you're running full speed at him and he blocks you that's nearly impossible to do <laughs> And it's our crazy. four of our dudes, it happened to, and I'm like, dude, that that right there, you 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 going to you, yeah. we, they have we have bad players, and that's and, and 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 not big dudes like these are the same like the same size guys like literally it would be me against you like we're the same yeah. we were the same way when we play like it's not like they're getting blocked by like you know Kelsey out there they're getting no. blocked by guys they're they're same position. Yeah, that's right. But it shouldn't happen if I have a full a full right. a full sprint. Yeah. Because even if I run full speed into you, my momentum should carry you another 10 yards where I can disengage from you and make a play. Yeah. The only yeah. time you should get blocked like that is if somebody come up on the side of you and you don't really see them and they yeah. kind of like get you at the last idea. second. Like an one-on-one -on -one block all the way down the field, you shouldn't be getting blocked one-on-one. -on -one. A double team, yeah, maybe. Not a one-on-one. -on -one. They need it. Man, I'll put it this way. Quinn Michael has never <laughs> been blocked one-on-one -on, -one on a kickoff return <laughs> or kickoff drill. It, it, it's, it's, it's impossible. Unless it's like a late, like one of those late flash by, you know, throw you back into them type. That's it. <laughs> Am I lying, Q? No, no, never. it's hard to get blocked. On. It's hard to get blocked. On. All right, all right, we, we'll get off of that. Um, <laughs> will special teams be Achilles' heel? You think the run defense? I think the run defense, special teams yeah. is so easy to correct. Yeah, it's, it's easy to correct. You because special teams it's the bottom of your roster. So, what that means is if the, the bottom of the roster is not doing well, you can cut them. Yo, and bring in more special teams players. This is not a starter. These dudes, a lot of times, are at the end of their position group and their own special teams. Guess what? If you, that's the value that you bring. If you can't do that well, I can find somebody else to do this and want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's easier to correct than the run. <laughs> Hardball you got to deal with dudes on the run game because you paid them a lot of money. All I, keep thinking about is like, <laughs> is, all I keep thinking about is how Hardball would, would be in meetings seeing something like that. We would have been, oh. been cursed out from here to bejesus and back, man. Like, it's... John? Uh, <laughs> John? He would have cursed us out so bad. John? <laughs> not, not like that? <laughs> 
It'd have been ah, oh, he'd have been soft. You a pussy. You <laughs> like it would it, it would have been bad. Your mama like Ray, <laughs> like oh, it would have been bad, bad, bad. This special teams used to be the best in the league. Now I've got a bunch of. <laughs> Gonna be pumping yeah. gas. Yeah, for real. That was his favorite line. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was crazy, man. <laughs> All right, let's let's finish up with these questions, Q. Andy, Andy S. <clears throat> this is for Q. I've been oh. wishing all season for Nicobe Dean to be playing. In the last show, you and Jason talked about the defensive communication. I greatly respect what TJ Edwards has done to elevate his game, but I think he has a lower ceiling than Nicobe. I feel like we are losing a year of potentially a great young player. Am I just imagining things? I'm going to let you see. Am I dreaming? <laughs> That's a good I mean. Just imagine. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a good question, man. I, you know, it's hard because I'm without being in in the practice and watching tape. It's hard to tell what the coaches are seeing and why they're not using them more. Um, I would, I will say this: that there's a lot of linemen getting up to T.J. Edwards. There's a lot of, um, it's not always, but there there have been a lot of times where he's had to fight off one and two blocks, and he's a big, strong kid. And I don't see N'Kobe Dean as a Mike linebacker. I think he's more of a Will, more of a Kaiser White type of player. Um, and there really haven't been many opportunities lately because Kaiser hasn't really been playing as much as he was before earlier in the year. So I think they're just trying to bring him along slowly. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player. I like his game. I just think that he's probably not quite ready yet. And – you know, want to don't want to risk throwing him out there with you know because he's he he came off some kind of injury right before the draft. He had like a peck or something. Yeah. So they're probably just trying to you know bring him along slowly. That's just my thought. I think I think I think Andy S. I think that TJ Edwards is playing at a very high level, yeah. a very high level for for what they're asking him to do. Yes. So I don't think that that TJ Edwards, I don't think that you should. Nicobe Dean is not a first round pick. He's not a second round pick. He's a third round pick that you got, right? I don't think that it sends the right message to just give a guy a spot. This is not the quarterback position where, okay, I'm just, I'm putting it in your hands. You know, we drafted you. We got to show you. Like, I think when you draft a guy in the third round and there's a guy playing in front of him, he can benefit from seeing seeing him play. And another thing, too, you get what you earn. I have never seen a middle linebacker, um, uh, a starting middle linebacker in this league, a will middle linebacker in this league, a strong middle linebacker in this league, that wasn't great at special team. Not a starter. If he's good enough to be a starter, he is an ass kicker at special teams. How many times have you seen the Kobe Dean? That's a good point. Yeah. Make plays. I'm talking about a one man show. Yeah. A one man. I'm gonna tell you this. I, like y'all don't recognize Q. I, we're not just. I'm not just saying this. Q's one of the best special teams players that the Eagles have ever seen. Ever seen. So, and his name was called the entire game, pretty much, <laughs> when, it, when it was special teams time. Your name was going to be called on, 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 on if, if, if there was going to be seven kickoffs, your name was going to get called three or four times. Like, that's just how it was. And, and ballers show up in those moments. I remember James Harrison playing special teams. One of the scariest things that ever happened in special oh teams. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? He was a like monster. One of, the, one of the scariest things you ever that you ever see happening, and you know, once that dude gets into the defensive rotation, like, oh, this dude going to be here because starters dominate against guys that are not starters. Yeah. That's just true. So until Nicobe Dean can show up and step up on special teams, I think what you're seeing is what you're getting in practice too. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I, y'all That's can take a shame it too, way, man. Because I, whatever, you, whatever way you want to say it, wherever you want to take it, like you got, if you, if you, if you getting blocked in special teams, you are gonna get blocked in in, in against stars. That's real. It's actually harder. <laughs> it's huh? harder. It's harder on special teams. Yeah. Than it is in the game. Like in you, the game. You're seeing, there's this moving this and dudes trying to knock you out. Like it's a lot of stuff going on. So if you can defeat that and you're the king of that, you're you're preparing yourself to be a starter. And that usually that usually carries over. Yeah. I've never seen I I I haven't seen it where a guy was I've seen it when it's older, when dudes just like, man, I don't want to do this no more. But all the young thirsty dudes. If they if you put a starter out there on special teams, you're gonna hear that boy name call. <laughs> you just are. Yeah. Thanks, so man. yeah. Appreciate that love. Unless man. it's a receiver. Because you didn't hear my name call it. <laughs> you, you balling on special teams too, man. <laughs> I was just pissed off all the time. Yeah, man. <laughs> I was supposed to be starting out there. Freaking got Sean Comps down over me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let me stop starting stuff. Make sure you guys continue to check out the Q&A podcast. This, story, this show normally drops every um, Tuesday morning. So make sure you guys check us out. Thanks to Adam, to Jeff. Thank you, Andy S., for submitting your question. To everyone that's tuning in to us each and every week, we'll continue to have more information for you guys next week. Let's go birds. Beat the tights this weekend. We're able to overcome a lot of these mistakes. Because we have one of the best players in the league and Jalen Hurts. Great offensive line, a opportunistic defense. Still leading the league yeah, in man. turnover margin. That's key right there. Making plays. <laughs> Q, you got the last words. As always, man, it's been a pleasure. I know you didn't want to say nothing, but congratulations to Michigan beating Ohio State. The big game this week. I hey. love watching it. <laughs> with that Man, talking about a good time we shut the city down my brother was down there and uh he said man every place was closed you know normally they party on saturdays you know at the ohio they said he said every place was closed on saturday nobody was out there really? <laughs> all right y'all bye it's getting late <laughs>